The world's best-selling single malt took me five and a half years to cover on this channel. Well, never said I knew what I was doing. <laughs> so this is the Glenfiddich 12. Let's get into it. Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary, where I do the research to try to teach you a little something about what you're drinking. Tonight we're going to be talking about the Glenfiddich 12. Now this is a whiskey with a great origin story. So William Grant, he is the founder of Glenfiddich. And in 1886, he decided to realize this lifelong dream he had of starting a distillery. Now William Grant had nine children. <laughs> he had seven boys and two girls. Might be why he drank, but still. <laughs> he decided, hey, you know what? Free labor. So between the nine kids, himself, and a stonemason that he had to hire, he built a whiskey distillery. Now, he started in 1886, finished on Christmas Day of 1887, is when the first drop of whiskey came out of his stills. Now, that's pretty awesome. I have to think he did that on purpose. If not, that's a heck of a coincidence, and I love it. So, in the Prohibition time, Glenfiddich ran into problems, much like many others. But what they decided to do, instead of just kind of, you know, really buckling down, cutting costs, and doing whatever, they just threw a whole bunch of money at the problem and made a whole lot more whiskey, thinking that, you know what, people love alcohol. Prohibition's gonna end. Let's bank on that. And they did. And it was a smart move, because obviously Prohibition ended. And now, all of a sudden, they have all the stock in the world, and they're able to sell a ton of it for pretty inexpensive. And that skyrocketed their popularity. Now, lastly, one of the cool things I learned about this distillery is that in the 60s and 70s, when Scotch whiskey, just worldwide, was suffering from lower sales, again, Glenfiddich said, hey, you know what, we've got this problem, let's throw some money at it. <laughs> now, it's fine, you know, I love this, I think it's funny, um, but they said, you know what, instead of just riding this one out too, let's get our marketing people on it. Let's come up with a new idea. Let's change the game. And in this case, they did. They said, hey, you know what? We make all this wonderful whiskey. We're blending it together, doing all this stuff. Has anybody just sold like a single malt? Like, let's make that a thing. <laughs> so they did. And single malt whiskey, single malt scotch, as you know it today, was essentially conceptualized by Glenfiddich. And just a fantastic concept. Obviously, we all are enjoying single malt scotches, especially if you're watching this channel. So thank you. Glenfiddich? <laughs> Obviously all of this worked out really well for them because they're on their fifth generation from William Grant. And, you know, it's a, still a family-run business, one of the very few that exists in Scotland. And they have their own on-site cooperage, they employ uh, coppersmiths, and as I mentioned, they're the best single malt scotch in the world. Best selling. So, truly a legendary distillery. Now, talking about the different whiskeys, this is one whiskey I've really wanted to get into for a very long time, mostly because I really wanted to, to open the distillery up for myself to do new episodes. As you guys know, I always cover the history that is the first episode I do, but there's so many of these little experimental things that Glenfiddich does that I've wanted to try, even in their not so core range, but like their experimental range that's always around, but there's less, say like Fire and Cane, for example, which I did a little poll on my YouTube, you know, uh, community tab thing, and I asked you guys what you liked, you know, which was your favorite expression from Glenfiddich. Now, it's pretty overwhelmingly uh, Glenfiddich 12, but I suspect that's mostly because most people have tried that versus some of the other options. But I did also ask, you know, if you like any of the experimental ones, which one would you pick? And the Fire and Cane was kind of the clear-cut winner. A lot of people wanted me to, not only me to try it, but they also like it themselves. So, um, there's a few different expressions out of Glenfiddich. Their core range includes pretty standard age expressions, 12, 14, 15, 18, 21. They also have several experimental expressions out there, which are usually available. Project XX, India Pale Ale Cask, Winter Storm, and Fire and Cane. If you guys like any of these in particular or want me to cover any of them, just let me know in the comments because I am really looking for some suggestions. I kind of want to try them all. And so I'll probably get through them eventually, but you guys can help me decide on which ones to do first. So let's go ahead and get into the nosing and the tasting here. So when I smell this, um, there's a little bit of a sherry influence in there, which makes sense. It's bourbon and sherry casks. So caramel, a little malty, 
kind of a strawberry note in there, which, you know, I usually attribute to kind of sherry, sherry influence. A lot of times in these kind of whiskeys, like single malt scotches from, you know, around this region, you, you get apples, you get pears. In this case, there's no difference. Mostly heavy on the apple, though. So. Yeah, I'd say that's that's about it. There's there's more going on in there, but I think those are probably what you're going to pick up. So let's go ahead and have a taste. Cheers. So I will say, just as one little negative, the finish leaves a little bit to be desired. But this is also a fairly inexpensive bottle, so I'm not really going to ding it too hard. Some of the tastes that you're going to be picking out here, and actually, you know, I'm going to take this back off because I'll probably have a second sip. So, pears, if you're swishing it around in your mouth, especially like kind of tip, tip of your tongue, you're going to be tasting pears all day long. It's very, very pear heavy, <laughs> if that's a thing. Um, apples as well. There's a uh, little sherry influence in there, but mostly honey, uh, especially on the finish, you're getting a lot of honey. Um, it's a little bit sugary sweet, uh, not heavy like that, but it, I, it's worth mentioning. It's it's sweet, but it's the finish really kind of overtakes any of the sweetness that you're really tasting as you're sipping it, and the finish lingers. So that's something to know. All right. Um, did I try a second sip? I'm not sure. I will anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little sugary right off, off the bat. The pear mutes during the second sip, but that initial sip, man, I wish that you could just take that first sip of whiskey all night long when you're tasting new things. It's tough when you start dulling your senses, like, because it goes real fast. You lose a lot of that nuance immediately. Oh, well, such is life. So overall, when I talk about Glenfiddich, most people have tried it. It's obviously, like I said, it's pretty high selling or the highest selling, but it's still something that people have tried. It's in a lot of bars. So for me, I first tried this whiskey at a company party, actually the same company party that I first tried Highland Park 18. So you can check out the video up there. Forgive the lighting. I was on location, uh, but whatever. It's a really, really old video. So if you don't want to watch it, I understand. But anyway, I was at this company party. And this guy, Todd, who knew that I really liked whiskey, he decided to bring this bottle along. And, you know, he told me, hey, you know, I picked up this bottle for you. And what a good whiskey to bring to a party, right? Especially thinking about the idea that at the time, I actually, I don't even think I had, I think I had started the channel, but just barely. So, like, I had not even had this at all, ever before. Um, but what a great whiskey to start somebody out on, right? This, this and the Glenlivet 12, those are two that I often uh, refer people to. So I wouldn't say it's an exciting whiskey, but it's, it's got approachability enough to have such a huge market share. It's cheap. It's really good. It's accessible. It's everywhere. But although I think this is worth trying, it's, this is a tough one. It's worth trying because it's something that you should try. It's worth buying because it's inexpensive. But I don't know that this is something that you're always going to keep around unless you're often introducing people to whiskey. In which case, this is a good one to have around. But I don't know. I, I'd like to know what you guys think in the comments here. I, I'm unsure whether I would want to necessarily give this one a try it or a buy it. I don't see myself stocking this. Like, I'm not going to have it forever. But, you know, I like having a few sips of this every now and then. But I'm not sure. I feel like there's a lot better stuff out there to buy even though this is fairly inexpensive. Um, yeah, I guess, I'll, I guess I'm gonna land on try it. It's easy enough to get at a bar, but there's other stuff to have. So I'm gonna go try it, although I definitely think you should try it. So there's my rating. All right, thank you very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary, and I hope you have a great rest of your night. Cheers.